Hello, everyone. Dave Lander here from DaveLander.com, and this is the week in charts. I'm sure I thank all you guys and girls for being here tonight. I appreciate you taking time out of, out of your busy schedule to attend. So what are we talking about? Well, obviously, current market conditions, and as I say each week, but especially this week, I have a lot to say about that. Your questions on trading, your favorite stock and crypto picks, and the crypto is live, obviously, because crypto is open right now. Just put a dollar sign in front of the crypto symbol, so I know it's a stock. I'm sorry, the crypto, not a stock. All right, so what are we going to focus on? Well, I want to talk about trading ogres and how it can be money in the corners, lying in the corner sometimes. And all you do is go pick it up, like Jimmy Rogers says. Sometimes I had a an associate associate over from StockCharts.com, as I mentioned a couple times tonight, and ogres don't always set up the opening gap reversal sometimes you have to wait weeks and sometimes even longer maybe months for one to set up we have one set up beautifully and i'll get to that in just one second i want to talk about trading them a couple of uh, tips and tricks on finding the best ones crypto crypto is going through another correction i guess the question is is it done well if it is i'm going to show you something that could be your best friend with that we'll go live crypto hunting too See if we can find any setups. I'll also, sh I will also show you my live portfolio. There was a disclaimer screen. As you know, you can lose money trading, or as often sum it up, all predictions. Come on, Greg. Are about the future. There it is. And a lot of stuff can happen between now and then. So here's the opening gap reversal in LCID. And my apologies. I was so excited that we had an opening gap reversal to show this friend of mine from stock charts who wanted to spend a couple days trading with me I forgot to mention it in Facebook but anyway it did kind of fake out early on and I had my finger on the trigger and then it sold off and once it sold off it felt pretty good like okay this is a good thing because it's really easy to get caught up in those first few minutes of trading now these are 15 minute bars so you do want to give it some wiggle room going in to the trade. And I almost bought in a little bit early could have easily gotten shaken out. Luckily, it did its little fake -a and And that's the hard part is waiting to see what's going to happen with that fake -a or if it's going to be a fake -a And sometimes they just, they just gap lower. They gap to their absolute low and they go straight back up. Anyway, I ended up buying right here and I had to stop down here. And I forget what I was looking for, point and a half, I think, or so on it. And it just couldn't quite get there. And I also didn't want to look like an idiot and have this turn into a losing trade, especially with somebody literally looking over my shoulder. And so I said, you know what, let's go ahead and just lock and load on this. So at least we got something. And then we'll trail that stop higher for the remainder of the day. And fortunately, it did rally, eventually rally nicely. Now, sometimes these opening gap reversals could be a route. And like I told them, if it makes it up to 47, which was the prior day's close, it'll probably go three or four more points. And it'll be the mother of all beautiful setups. Now, I did exit the remainder of the position on the close. And I did take it across more than one account. But in this particular case, I bought how many shares? 400 shares. And you can see if you add up all the buys and sells for the day, it comes to 826. So it's better than a poke in the eye. So again, you want to be really careful with that opening range and try not to get too caught up in it. Now, here's a daily chart. So this is what happened. Again, it opens, it trades on both sides of the market and then sells off fairly hard. So at that point, you're like, okay, I can put it a stop order. Now, the reason I want to show you a daily chart is you can you can get really caught up in the intraday charts and if you're new to trading opening gap reversals i'd recommend you look at a daily chart and maybe say okay where would this thing be a bona fide possible opening gap reversal put your entry in there use a stop order that's that's how i entered on the other one even though i was itching to pull my pull a trigger figure my trigger figure was itching there's jokes in there i can't i gotta be careful <laughs> <laughs> Might be too soon in some cases. Uh, anyway, was was uh, I was itching to get in, and then again, not to beat the dead horse, but luckily after a little up fake out, it didn't begin to implode. I was like, dodge a dead bullet. I dodged a bullet. Dodge a dead bullet. I'm I've got Alec Baldwin jokes in my head. I, I apologize, which is not 
not appropriate, I don't know. Anyway, so you can see on a daily chart, it might've been a little bit easier to play. And I would encourage you to play the, the daily charts if you're newer to opening gap reversals. Now, the other reason I wanna show you the daily chart is, it's not the most beautiful setup in the world, but it's a pretty good looking stock. And you can see it took off from 20 all the way almost to 60. So pretty much tripled in value made a bit of a kind of a double top knockish knockout lookish pattern and then sold off from here so as i'm going to point out in a few minutes you want to make sure they're set up on the daily chart and i see opening gaps all the time and things that are wide and loose and sideways and gaps to the downside burning dogs as we call them uh, borrowing a line from linda rasky and that was in trading sardines you don't want to catch that falling knife. You do want to see if you can get that reversal back into the direction of the major trend, especially after a correction. Now, to those of you on the service, and I had a few of you guys thank me on Facebook, and I appreciate that uh, throughout history. Um, a lot of times, if I see a stock, let's say that this was a TKO here. I mean, technically, it's a TKO, but let's say it's a TKO down here, really the mother of all TKOs, and it closes on its butt. What you should watch for, and I point these out in real time, and every now and then, the beauty of it is AMD didn't work out quite so well the other day. But we'll take a look at that one too, and I'll show you why I pointed out AMD. But I'll point them out when I see them, and then the sometimes it's a beautiful thing, like, okay, guys, tomorrow we're going to watch AMD. This one just popped up on my screen, and I checked the screen like five minutes before the open, and my apologies for not putting it in Facebook, but you guys at Facebook know that I usually put them in Facebook. And I don't remember which stock it is. I, I tend to forget stocks quickly. I seem to remember losses more than longs, but I think that's a that's a human nature thing with the dopamine and the psychological impact of a loss versus a gain. But it was a winning trade. It wasn't a huge trade, but it did work out okay. And so the last over worked okay. By the way, I was looking for some slides earlier tonight and I realized, oh yeah, you won that profit center kick over the summer and on. This is one of the profit centers, the opening gap reversals. But it's not like an income producing machine because these only come along, as I said earlier, once every couple of weeks and then sometimes it might be once every couple of months. But if you could wait and 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 take only the best and I should have spent a ticket on that trade. <laughs> Maybe I should get some tickets and do just uh, the uh, ogres. I should I should do a stack of ogre trades and see how they go. In fact, I should do that. I'm glad I reminded myself. I uh, I bought some little carnival tickets or whatever you want to call these things, and borrowing kind of a, a Charlie Munger thing. Not that I agree with much of what Charlie Munger says and does, but I did like the fact that he talked about if you only had so many tickets to punch you would probably be a little bit more selective in your trend in your trades. And in this case, I should probably do like 10 opening gap reversals and then point out that, hey, I'm gonna actually spend a ticket on this one and go from there. Anyway, hopefully that makes sense. If not, the now column, which is on the back end of the website, explains that in a lot more details. Now, one thing I really wanna talk about is picking the best ogres and, and having, I'll just use it, call it, call him my name to make life easier, but having Zach with me and teaching him in the process. And I was so blessed to have that he showed up when he showed up. Three weeks ago, I was thinking, man, this guy's just going to quit his job when he sees how much money I'm making trading. And then two weeks ago, I'm thinking he's going to think I am a freaking idiot because I'm going through a drawdown. I had some bad day trades and a lot of other things just aren't working. And then luckily, uh, he came in. And a lot of this stuff hit and the, the position started coming back and such. <laughs> I called him a good luck charm. My wife came in this morning, uh, yesterday morning. How's your trading going? I'm like, meh. He's like, you miss your little good luck charm? I'm like, yeah. <laughs> but anyway, you want to pick the best. And, and, and in teaching him which stocks to pick, it made me realize that I really need to reiterate this to you guys. You want to you wanna go after larger cap, ideally well-known issues. I did do Tesla a while back. Not that I'm a big fan of trading Tesla. I prefer usually to find more inefficient stocks. 
But sometimes these really well-known issues work best. Like I said a minute ago, I was looking for something in AMD. We'll take a look at that chart in a minute and see what actually happened on a day. And in some ways, it's kind of sort of just the opposite of the core methodology. Now, we do trade some really big cap stocks on occasion in the core methodology, and they can make inefficient moves like CPE, which is Calon Petroleum. I don't know if I'm saying that right or not, but it's a was an oil company a while back, went up 500%. That was a very inefficient move and in what could be seen as a possibly efficient stock because it's such a large cap stock. But in general, we're going after the smaller biotech or some sort of developing technology, maybe crypto now or was, at least. But you want something where you have a lot of players. You want something that's likely caught the attention of some institutions. And what happens with the opening gap reversal is the institutions who may have missed the boat might be looking to get in cheaply or at least cheaper because they miss that 300% run up, but they want to get into it. In the case of the LCID, it's electric cards, it's a hot thing. Their clients start doing a little research or reading, poking around the net or whatever and saying, oh, well, this is an up and coming electric car company. This is the next LCID. Let's have a look at that portfolio to see if I've got any in my portfolio. So the portfolio manager, knowing that the reporting is coming up soon, might actually go in and buy that gap while it's cheap. And the traders who maybe work for that institution who forgot to put the orders in recently or whenever, they have to beat the VWAP, that's volume weighted average price, Google it, and they might be rushing in to fill those orders. Now the same might hold true for individual traders, and as I preach, we're trading traders and not markets. So think about what you're going through. Think about what they might be going through. They might say, ooh, it's on sale. It's time to buy. Or they might have gotten knocked out on the open, freaked out, knocked out, freaked out. And then all of a sudden, it starts going right back up. And they decide, oh, geez, as we say in Fargo, let's just get right back in. Now, lucky shorts who were short the stock coming into the day and they finally got vindicated, they're gonna be looking to get out if the thing doesn't continue to implode. Or what's worse for them is if it continues to implode like it did two days ago, the LCID, and then maybe that little pop higher, they might've gotten out and then all of a sudden it starts to implode, they might've piled on, some new shorts might've piled on. Sometimes you could trade the gap and go, and you got to be really careful with that. And in this case, I don't know if it was shortable or not. I might have tried to just to do a little probe just to see. But sometimes you could trade a gap and go. Not my favorite thing to do. I'd much rather trade the open and gap reversal. Now, sometimes in the indices, I'll trade a little gap and go type of situation. But anyway, lucky shorts, or shorts in general, or possibly some new shorts rushing in might be looking to cover and their buying is going to help push it higher and higher. Now, as I said a minute ago, the stock should be set up with strong momentum and recently has hit new highs. So pullbacks, TKOs, odd things of that nature are usually good things to trade. So do that trade the burning dogs, as I said earlier. So if you got a stock that's going straight down, has a big gap down, don't go in and try to be a hero. I've tried doing that before. It doesn't work. Okay, it might work every now and then, but in general, you want to think about the psychology of the market. Do you think there's some institutions out there that might have missed the boat and some big shorts coming in or, or trying to get out, I should say, or both? And I've tried opening gap reversals in thinner issues, and sometimes it doesn't work. It just knocks out who is going to get knocked out, and there's nobody waiting in the wings. But in a Tesla and an AMD, I think one of my best examples ever, it came up when I was searching ogres on my computer, was the, what's the name of that stock? Cree made a really good opening gap reversal. Well-known stock. So keep an eye on these, on these semis, which were recently strong. So we could see some setting up there soon. Now, one thing that, that happened while Zach was here 
was the fact that, you know, I was really nervous about having somebody come in and watch the sausage get made. And I think that over time, I'll get more and more comfortable with that as more and more people are uh, threatening to visit. But you really have to be on your game. And I wanted to show them everything warts and all. And I look like a genius in some aspects, especially on this particular trade, that also look like an idiot. So this was a buy at B setup. And I noticed John and maybe somebody else, John R is our resident IPO expert in the group. He keeps on top of these things, was mentioning this one. Now we don't look to buy an IPO until the close of day five at the earliest. We actually just buy the new closing high with quite a few caveats. And one of those caveats is if the high is set on day one for the week, it also has to close above that high. Now, if let's say bar, this is bar two, bar three. Now, if bar three would have taken out this high, then we're no longer worried about the day one high, and then we just go off the closing high, which would have been, let's see, one, two, three, four, five. Actually, the closing high, the highest close would have been right here on bar one. So the entry would have been right here. But after bar four, we know that the first day set the high for the week. So that becomes our buy line, so to speak. And again, the new closing high would have been, you'd have been long on this day if any one of these days in here would have taken out that high, okay? Now, this is where you're supposed to buy on this close here, right around six. And after hours trading, it began to rally. And I was busy shutting down some positions and talking with Zach and showing him what a genius I am. And I'm like, oh boy, I forgot to, forgot to take this IPO. And I actually showed him in the Facebook group, hey, look, John's talking about this one. I'm talking about this one too. Or I just found it. I showed him a little scan I do towards the end of the day. And I got in in after hours. Now, I had to pay up a little bit, but I figured it was worth it. It was trading higher, and it was trading with a lot, a lot, a lot, a lot of volume. And in this account where I was showing him the trade, it's sort of my model account. I just did like a 1,000 shares. And within like five minutes, I was up 700 to to $1,000 on the trade. It was a gift horse. And... I think I let my ego get to me a little bit. I wanted to, because it was running so fast, I was thinking this thing's gonna keep on running. I'm gonna look like a genius, be up a few thousand dollars, each point's a thousand, right? It'll run two, three points, and I'm gonna look really smart, and then I might go ahead and take a little bit off. But unfortunately, if you've ever traded an after hour, sometimes it's easy come, easy go. So I said, oh gosh, darn. <laughs> And the next day I'm at a pretty big loss. But then what happens? It has a big, huge rally, would have easily hit my initial profit target, and then comes right back in. So the point I'm trying to make with this, and as I've been saying lately, when I'm talking about the doing trading stuff all day, is that I want to show you kind of warts it all and, and with a little transparency, a lot of what I'm doing. And I think the lesson here is as a trader you really have to be on your game. And if you're doing a lot of different things, sometimes you pull a lot of different directions. Uh, crypto lately, except up until recently, has been taking up a lot of time, nights and weekends included. But you really have to kind of juggle it all and really, really be on your game. And while I was busy making sure I shut down all the day trades I put on, and I don't remember if that was the same day the LCID trade was, might have been. I forgot to put on this trade and the market gods were very kind to me. They were like, hey, Dave, it's not that much higher after hours. You want in, you can get in. And then it's like, hey, Dave, here's your additional profit targets five minutes later, or it might've been two minutes later, it wasn't long. And by the way, if you do get into something and within minutes that IPT is hit, or if you're up a lot, then chances are it might come back in. So don't look that gift horse in the mouth. So I actually made a plethora of mistakes on this one. And today I did remember to put my 
initial profit target in, and I'm just looking for a point on this one, which is what, 75% or I'm sorry, 25% move. And it didn't hit, unfortunately. So we'll see what happens with this. This is one of those things that I was thinking when I didn't take this gift horse, the next day he saw this happen too. He saw me miss this one too. And I was thinking, I didn't tell him, but it's like, if that thing turns into a losing trade and it, I could have gotten my money out of it, I'm going to be so angry when that happens. Yeah, John, and that's the other thing I didn't do was my order, I didn't have GTC order, I just had EXT order, and usually I don't let a GTC run. In this case, I sure wish I would have, because when I saw 770 plus on that spike, I realized that my order had expired, because I did have, the, I did, so, oh, by the way, so that's what I did. So after I missed that gift, Taurus, I'm like, oh, crap. Let me put that order back in and after hours trade. So, and I've, I've done this a few times, John, and I fully agree with you. Let me, let me read what you say first to make sure you're saying the same thing, I think. The first thing I do is set a sell limit, GTC plus extended hours on my trades, especially IPOs, but I cannot watch the screens like you guys. Yes. And I agree with that. And I've done that a few times, especially with the buy at B. And a lot of times with buy at B, I'll put in a, uh, like a crazy after hours order. You know, it's something cheap like this. Maybe, well, point higher is pretty crazy if you think about it. But sometimes, let's say it was a $10 IPO, I might put in a $13, $14 crazy order in there if it's not doing a whole lot in after hours. But yeah, I think that's a great idea to have that. IPT set with GTC plus extended hours to make sure that you get that trade off. Now, the only downside to doing that, and you have to kind of weigh one thing with the other, is if this thing just has a huge move overnight, runs up five points, I mean, it could happen, but not likely, but it could happen, then you don't make quite as much money. But hey, if you got the other half of the trade on, who cares, right? All right, let's talk a little bit about crypto. One thing I'm noticing, and this has happened a few times, obviously, since crypto has been the thing, right, is that the bloom is off the rose. And I think the bloom is off the rose once again here. I was talking to one of you via a direct message and I remember on Thanksgiving Day, in between frying turkeys, <laughs> I did a little trading and I had, let's see, it's somewhere in here. I had seven, yeah, right here, seven. I had seven crypto pairs hit the IPT. And that's just fantastic. And I haven't had any in a while. I had one hit today, which I'll show you. And that was the first one in a long time. In fact, when I saw that half my position was off, I'm like, oh, geez, I hope I didn't get stopped out. One thing I've been thinking about quite a bit is using Ethereum and Bitcoin as a barometer. And I'm going to walk you through all this in just one second. Bitcoin's the biggie. Ethereum is another biggie. If you've been trading crypto, you're familiar with those, obviously. I'm wondering if, Bitcoin is weak or maybe even just below the 30 EMA if you might want to sit in your hands or be a little bit more selective on the long side. Speaking of 30 EMA, I am friggin' amazed at how well the 30 EMA can keep you out of trouble. And this might work for stocks too. And we'll take a look at that in just one second. Now, lately I've been back to mostly the core methodology. The one that hit the IPT I think was based on the core methodology and a few other ones in my portfolio, which you'll see in just one second, or core methodology. In other words, more of like pullbacks than the, the relative strength and the breakouts that I've been trading. Now it is a little less fun and was certainly less time consuming too, because you're swapping in and out of these pairs really quickly and you're working to be in the strongest ones because if one doubles or triples over the next three minutes to three days, it's going to have to get hot first. And that's the prettier girl swapping we talked about or prettier guy swapping, whatever you're into. 
As Dennis Miller says, if you're in the both, you're just a greedy bastard. Now, the good news is it might be more sustainable longer term, okay? Thrust, pullback, thrust, pullback, thrust, pullback, thrust, pullback, rinse, and repeat. It's a heck of a lot less work than the relative strength, the hot potato or the prettier girl swap, whatever you want to call it. And I'll walk you through a few of those in just one minute so that'll make sense. I think you'd have bigger but fewer losses in general. And what I'm saying there is sometimes in a breakout, you could use a really, really tight stop. Yeah, you'll get stopped out frequently, but who cares? I mean, I'm, I'm some of them you know, like $20, $50, maybe $100, $200. You know, not a huge loss if you're playing the breakout game or other strength game and catching a few or seven like I did on Thanksgiving Day could really make it all worthwhile. But the other thing, as I've been preaching in last week's webinar, last week's Day Lanes Week of Charts, I talked a lot about these type of things. If you're doing that hot hot potato swapping or prettier girl swapping, whatever we want to call it, whatever you want to call it, where you're in the hot one, but someone's one it stalls out a little bit, and another one looks really, really hotter. So you scratch out of that when you go jump on another one, and you just lose a little bit on this, a little bit, but then you lose a little on this one, and you keep doing that over and over again. You can end up with a death of a thousand cuts. The other thing that I've, it, it, I don't, you know, trading is a work in progress. Like uh, Michelangelo said at 80, he's uh, Ankara, Ankara, Imparo. I probably butchered that. Il mio italiano, non è molto bene. <laughs> brutto, brutto. Uh, but, anyways, he was saying, anyway, he was saying, I am a work in progress, and I have a work in progress, and I think as traders, we all are a work in progress. So this crypto stuff is a work in progress. I thought I had to grail for a while with this RS stuff, but I knew from my prior 30 years of doing this stuff that it never lasts as long as you want it to. But the issue that does happen if you're doing a lot, a lot, a lot of trades is that you will occasionally end up with you'll miss a really big one or two or three or four or five or six that you were just in. And that can be a little frustrating. Now, if you're trading more of the core methodology, that's a little less likely to happen because you're using probably wider stops and you're waiting for the, the moves and all. So let me get, let's shift gears and switch into crypto. And I will show you all those things I just talked about. So if you're doing the prettier girl swapping or hot potato swapping, you would sort by the strongest pairs. Now, I knew this would kind of muck us up a little bit <laughs> because as one of you guys pointed out, the, the trading view starts its new day. So like this KOK, which I'm actually long, if I can get to it, there it is. So this was up big and it was a bit a combination of core methodology, nice little pullback in here, and it also began to take off. So a combination of core methodology and RS. And But if you're looking to play the RS game, you're simply looking at the strongest ones by sorting the pairs by the strongest moves, okay? And if you're in a really good market, you sometimes you can just go in and buy the top pairs. Now, uh, while I'm doing this, if there's any ones you want me to look at real quick, I'll be happy to do that too. But you can see there's some strong pairs in here, but what you really want is, again, you want to make sure as a general statement that you're above that 50 day, I'm sorry, 30 EMA. And you'd be surprised as I go through these tonight, how many of these things just absolutely implode this kind of looks interesting cov as a breakout play it's making brand new highs i think i'm long this i hope i'm long this <laughs> we'll get another window open and i'll i'll go check real quick but that looks pretty good if you're playing that really and it's it's new or new to this exchange so there is a little bit of that kind of like that ipo excitement or whatever when these things get listed on new exchanges. And let me just come over here and see if we're long. I hope I am. I don't know if I am or not. 
King of all markets, charts, trading. But it would be as simple as that. And I don't know if I have any room to, to add on, but if I had room to add on, I would uh, COV. Nope, I am not long this one. But if I had room in this account, let me go to the trading. I would definitely add this one on right now. And like I said last week, a lot of times everything looks great. So I'll put this one as a green and I'll try to see if I can get a position established after the week of charts is over. Let's take a look at that real quick. Over here, COV. Yeah, we'll wait till afterwards. Now here's the problem. So showing you this in real time, what I may have to do is, let's see, it's at 61, 62. What I may have to do is actually sell out a few pairs to actually make some room for this one. So sell some things that aren't really working that well to make some room. And again, the 30 EMA is your best friend. Look at all these things going down. I think it was, I forget his first name, but his last name is Gayard. He wrote a paper years ago that somebody pointed out to me called where, Bear, where Bad Things Happen. And his point was bad things happen in markets below the, the 50 and 200 day moving average. Well, bad things happen in crypto below the 30 EMA. And I think if that's all you did was pay attention to that 30 EMA, you're not going to print money, but you certainly would stay out of a lot, a lot of bad trades. And again, look at these things that are falling. In fact, if we switch this sort order in here to negative, I think you'll be pretty impressed with, again, how well that 30 can keep you out of trouble. So let me find something that's somewhat of a, a known crypto. Now see, that's a sh that's actually a short, okay? You see the S right here? So that's an inverted thing, all right? So going long, that's like going short. But yeah, notice here, we're below the 30. Notice all the bad stuff that's happened. This one lost half its value. And let's see if we can find a couple of more real quick that aren't doing so hot with the 30. But I think you get the point. And I think if all you did, and you know, play with it on your own, put in your time, get some reps in. Look at this one, okay, burp. Okay, it's really burped. Uh, was that 10 cent not that long ago? Now it's at six cents, 40% of its value around numbers. So again, use that 30, it could be your best friend when it comes to crypto. Now, let me show you my portfolio real quick before I forget, and then we'll see if there's anything out there that might be worth a shot. So VR, this one was just breaking out. I mentioned this one in Facebook. It's done absolutely nothing since. AXC, another one of these kind of breaking out. I got into this one pretty late in the game. GALAX, I sort of front ran this one. Notice it pulled back to the 30 EMA, again, your best friend. And it hasn't done anything wrong just yet, but it just really hasn't taken off, obviously. You can see back here, I was playing it. I was playing the RS game, but it was also probably a 230 EMA. And I don't know if it was this one, but there was one I showed last week or week before my stock chart show. Within the first three minutes, it went from here to here, and I was already taking partial profits. That hasn't happened lately, okay? You can look back here. What was I said around Thanksgiving? I hit six. Or seven, no, it's seven. Well, don't be that impressed. I don't know what day Thanksgiving was. Anybody know? But it was somewhere in here, and you can see most all of them just went straight up. So, function of the market. This was a little thinner, a little unorthodox, but I did like it because it was going up. And so far, it really hasn't worked out. And this is one that I've been in a while. Actually, actually, take that back. I think I got in this one after it tagged the 30. And was looked, I kind of front ran it in here somewhere. And so far, it hasn't anything wrong, but it hasn't taken off. This is the one that I've been in for absolutely forever. And just the same old stuff I preach. And I'm just so excited and amazed that it actually works so well in crypto. But what do you have? Look at this trend back here. It's huge, as Tony Elvis would say. 
And then you got this nice little pullback. It almost comes to the EMA. And if you're playing a relative strength game and a pullback, that's a double whammy as far as I'm concerned. That's excellent. I got in there. I think I got knocked out here, if I remember. And I got back in when it began to rally. It was also high in the RS list. And then now it's kind of chopping around. But I've already taken partial profits again on that one. And I'm still long. So we'll see what happens. Okay, okay. This is the only one. <laughs> my voice went. <laughs> This is the only one lately that has hit the IPT, you know? So I don't want to make it look like I've got this stuff figured out, but this is really cool because it's kind of a TKO type move, got in around here, IPT 20% higher. And then now my stock is at break even plus, stop is at break even plus. I also, as I talked about in prior shows, go back a few weeks, I also mined off a little, so to speak. So on every one of these, when it hits that IPT, I take 50 bucks off the trade. If I put a thousand in the original trade, I take half the trade off at a 20% profit. So that would be $1,200, $50 of half of that. So $1,200, so it'd be $100 profit. I take 50 and I move it off to the side. I know it goes against trading, but I figure if one of these things becomes the next big thing, Especially in some cases, if I keep, if I can rinse and repeat that a few times and get a little growth, I don't know if I can show you this without making some, without showing you, having my account drain tomorrow <laughs> if I showed you the wrong thing. But in some cases, let's see if I could do this. In some cases, let's see if this will work. Well, I'll just take my word on it. Oops, may have messed something up. Anyway, in some cases, it's actually built up a little bit. And like, for instance, because I hit two or three initial profit targets, stopped out, hit a profit target, trail stop, stop out. On something like Crow, I have like $300 kind of mined away in Crow. And there's a few other ones like Galax, Gala. A lot of these gaming stocks, by the way, these game stocks or gaming stocks, whatever you call them, you see this case. So back here, that would have been probably did 1000 flipped it out, take 50 off, put it to the side. Now I'm doing this with nickels and dime and it dimes and it's a game to see how far I can parlay the account by keeping it small. But I, I am a little tempted to add more and more to it. Of course, when you're feeling that temptation is right around the time, like right now where, again, the bloom is off the rose. So anyway, that's the open portfolio. Root is another one that kind of looks like that one we just looked at earlier, uh, COV. It's hard to see because there's a big tick over here. But COV, this is kind of what root looked like. It's already backed off a little bit. So, and then it might be a little thin. That's one thing I haven't fully figured out is the volume. And one way to, to look at volume without spending a lot of time studying it, if you got a lot of little ticks on like a 15 minute chart, or if you got a lot, uh, or if you have, I should say, my wife will correct me. If you have a lot of big tails, then sometimes it's kind of thin. So this one looks like it could be a little thin. So probably a good thing I didn't get too excited and jump right in, but it's it's worth watching. I'll keep an eye on it. So that's crypto. And one thing I do when I'm looking for, obviously I sort by the strongest, but one thing I do when I'm looking for like pullbacks is I sort by the weakest and I'm only going to buy as a pullback trader. I'm only going to buy on strength. So I'll go down to where they're just kind of barely positive because I know I'm going to be buying on an uptick. And then I'll go and see if I could find any pullbacks to the EMA. Now, this is one that I actually pointed out to one of you guys and I did not take it. I actually got it confused with another one that I'm long, the KOK, I think. But it made a nice little pullback to the 30, and then you can see so far it's taken off fairly nicely in here. Gala, I'm still long this one again, but you can see nice little pullback to the 30, little rally. A re-entry on this would be about 58 cents. So same stuff works in stocks, works in crypto. When crypto is running, it can work exceptionally well. But let's take a look at the possible barometers for the market. And that would be 
Bitcoin, obviously the elephant, and then Ethereum would be its close friend, close cousin. And what is Bitcoin doing? Well, Bitcoin's below 30 EMA, okay? And I actually shorted it a little bit. I didn't make any money, truth be told, on this, but you did have a one, two, a 230 EMA trigger, would have triggered on this bar here, a little bit liberal, would have triggered over here. And so far, it's got a lot of generations, uh, or uh, gyrations, I said generations, gyrations. But so far, you can see it's held below that 30. It did touch it a few times. And so far, not so good. And Ethereum, Ethereum is kind of chopping back and forth. So maybe keep an eye on Ethereum too. Obviously, Bitcoin's the big one. By the way, one thing that amazes me, and I was showing my little buddy this, if you are looking at the 230 EMA breakout system, and remember, breakouts often fail, but they can work really well in inefficient markets like IPOs and crypto. And the 230 EMA system is just two lows below, I'm sorry, two lows above for longs, I was thinking shorts, two lows above the 30 EMA, and you look to get long above the high. And one thing, like I said, I was showing Zach is that sometimes a market will chop back and forth, back and forth, back and forth around that 30 and no capital is put into harm's way. And again, that works really, really, really well in inefficient markets, which we are in right now, but only when they're rallying. Now, as I was, as I mentioned last week, last, last thing real quick, when I, my database was much smaller because I was trading out of Coinbase or Kraken, mostly, and Jim and I, I have accounts with half a dozen of these things, could be a nightmare for taxes, but I, I have some things that should help with that. Anyway, it was easier to notice whether or not we we're in a hot or cool market because you'd see a little green over here and the rest would be red. Now that I've expanded my database out to about 700 of these things, it's a little bit harder to get a read on the market without having to go through quite a few charts and notice what's above or below the moving average. Now, it'd be really cool if there was a way to, I haven't figured out a lot of things just yet, but let's say you're looking at 700 and you can figure out how many are above or below. You got to toss out the inverted ones, obviously, because that just kind of messes your numbers up. But it'd be interesting to see the strength of the market based on the ones that are above or below the 30 EMA. And that's kind of a macro type of looking at things, but it might help to keep you out of trouble if you're kind of getting excited like I just did about that one, it looked like it was breaking out. It's like, well, hang on, Dave. Let's just tap the brakes here. Bitcoin's not doing so hot. Ethereum's a little questionable. At least it's below the 30. Most of these things are below the 30. Can this one defy gravity? And that's the the mental masturbation I went through with the KOK. Was And it's like, you know what? I, I really like it. I don't care about all those things. So that's why I took that particular trade. Okay, let's shift gears, go to stocks real quick. Anybody want to pull up any pairs real quick before I shift gears? Because once I once it's gone, it's going to be hard to get back or it takes a minute to get back. So let's take a look at the overall market. And if you want to pull up some, if you want me to look at some stocks, we could do that too. As I've said, at nausea, and what usually the because we're talking about stocks all day in the Facebook group, we don't spend as much time in the we get charts, and that's fine. Okay, what is the thing between a 30 day is just a month of trading, Sam? Uh, I, you're probably gonna party with me. I fell in love with a 20 EMA years ago. And that's where I wrote the 220 EMA breakout system. And I've talked about that in quite a few webinars. And, and if I could find a, a one where I have it kind of a little bit more condensed, maybe I could put that in as a quick quick video. It's just a, an EMA that I really liked, and then I discovered the 30 and the 10 simple and the bow tie relationship that I often talk about. And lately, I've just been liking the 30 just because it really can do a good job of keeping you in a trend for a long, 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 long time. Like I said last week, I think you can go all the way back to November. Yeah, you can go all the way back. Look at this, all the way back to November. And you had a few tags, but you only had, I think, one bar of Landry Light, high 
lower than the moving average all the way until September. So almost a whole year of trading is contained with that 30 EMA. And yeah, technically it's six weeks, weeks worth of trading. One thing you have to remember, I don't have the math in front of me, but I think uh, EMA is like 95% of the last bar's trading or something like that. And then it looks back in time. And technically it looks back more than 30 days, even if you're just doing a 30 day one, but those days drop off a lot more quickly. And that's why it catches up the price a lot faster. It kind of builds in that drop off effect, but like on steroids. But yeah, no reason in particular, but I do agree with you. That's one thing that I talked about when I talked about the bow ties, 20 days, roughly a month, 30 days, six weeks. All right, speaking of the P's and the moving average, we're back above the 30 EMA. You're welcome, Sam. And the good news is we just have all time highs. Today's weakness, though, is a bit of a bummer. My thinking coming into today and day before yesterday is that, okay, this thing looks like it was going to really roll over. And I noticed a lot of people were freaking out. And I'm like, okay, yeah, let's let's pay attention. Let's Let's not get too excited, but let's pay attention. Let's honor our stops. Maybe let's sit on our hands a little bit on new positions. And then when we had this gap and nice run a few days ago, I was thinking, okay, the hook is in. This thing looked like it was rolling over. Everybody and their brother was saying, sell, sell, sell. Chicken Little, what's his name? Was it Chicken Little when the sky was falling? Or was it Henny Penny? Was it Henny Penny? I had a little chicken named Henny Penny once because it would always go. Roo, 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 roo. That's how they just talk like that all day. Anyway, um, I really thought the hook was in, but we didn't get the upside follow through. So let's just wait and see if this is a fake out of the fake out and see what happens. So kind of cautiously optimistic, a little concern though that we stalled short. And as you'll see in one second, sector action is not fantastic. NASDAQ, not fantastic either. Wasn't quite back to those old closing highs. Today's action, big sell off, down almost one and three quarters percent. Not the end of the world, but ideally, I'd like to see it above these moving averages. And ideally, while we're wishing for things, I'd like to see it make new highs and stay there for a while. Rusty gets even uglier, okay? Rusty technically triggered a bow tie short today to the downside. And you can see that it's kind of rolled over in here. And this was a huge bummer because we finally got a stupid base that we came all the way back in. So that's kind of sucks to put it mildly. But as usual, one day at a time. And let's hope, I hate to use the word hope, but hope the bottom of this base holds here. Energies tried to rally recently. They're losing steam again. They've lost steam in general. Getting a little choppy. So I'd avoid the energies for now. A lot of financials. Not looking so hot. You can see it kind of looks like big picture tops, maybe head and shoulders, and hate to get in all that classical technical analysis. So my favorite thing is when big old head and shoulders top doesn't work and it goes straight back up. That could be a good signal. Drugs, for the most part, have rolled over, sold off fairly hard today. Biotech, even uglier. Biotech remaining in a downtrend, selling off fairly hard today, down 2% of change. Leisure hasn't been so hot lately. I don't want to confuse the issue with facts. I think that Omicron thing, from what I've seen so far and from the doctors, you you doctors out there who are clients are basically sending me a lot of stuff saying it's overblown. But so far, leisure doesn't quite believe that. So believe in what you see and not what you believe. And let's hope it's not. You know, let's let's have some hope out here outside of the markets. <laughs> what was it? Uh, Tom McClellan sent me from his, his drill sergeant. Hope, as in birth control, is not a battle plan. I think it's something like that. Hope and warfare. Software is a bit of a bummer because obviously kind of bow tie-ish, kind of sloppy in here, sold off fairly hard, not looking too good, in general in a downtrend, so that's a little bit of a concern. My favorite area when it comes to the health of the markets is the semis. I like to see the semis confirm what's going on in the indices. Semis have been looking fantastic as of late. New closing highs just a couple days ago, right? But now, kind of ate it today, down 2.5%. Uh, truth be told, I fired off an SOX 
trade intraday. I couldn't stand it anymore. <laughs> so picked up a few thousand, maybe more than a few thousand shares. But I was out by the close. All right, that's it for the markets. Ah, check back often. Let's see what tomorrow brings. It's going to be interesting being Friday. Hopefully, we see a big follow through to the upside and we don't have to worry about all these things. If you're on a trading service, you'll notice recently I haven't recommended a whole lot of things. We had three longs coming into this mess. And even after it kind of was selling off fairly hard, we were still looking to get long, those three extra longs. And then each day that seemed to go, one of those seemed to come off each day as they failed to trigger. Anyway, so that's it for the overall market. So a little questionable. So maybe Synergy Hands might be the best action in here. I am seeing quite a few shorts. I'm not super excited about shorting things. I do have a put or two out there on some stuff. But I'm not going crazy bearish on the short side just yet, but I am paying attention just in case. All right, any questions, any individual issues? I know we talk about most of these things in the group. All right, while we're in impasse, I want to thank everybody for coming tonight. I appreciate you taking time out of your busy schedule. Anything unanswered, if you're not in Facebook, if you're in Facebook, ask there so everybody can benefit, unless it's something directly related to the trading service. But anyone else, davelander.com slash contact. Everybody have a great night. And if we don't talk to you now and then, have a great weekend. And may the trend be with you. Thank you so much.